Hello, this is Project 8 of the Arduino Starter Kit. I'm on Tinkercad.com. If you are following along with a real Arduino, that works really well. Otherwise, you can use the digital one on Tinkercad.com. You log in with Google or your own account. Click on Learn. Change this to Circuits. Go to Projects. I do have a video. Click on Show All. Um, I do have a video on every single one of these starter kits all the way up until Digital Hourglass. So feel free to check those out. But now we're on Project 8, Digital Hourglass. And it says in this project you will build a clock that turns an LED on every 10 minutes. The clock uses the Arduino Uno's built-in timer. Reset the clock the way you would reset an hourglass by tilting it back and forth. So I really I like how they're adding the, the real life function of, of you know, shaking it. Um, I think that's a nice thing. So as always, I am not going to read through all of this. You're more than welcome to do that on your own time. I will assume that you don't want me to do that. So here's a breadboard. Uh, this is where we prototype. We connect all our components to our Arduino. And Arduino is programmed to uh, do certain things. So take in information and let out information. So let's move forward. So we already talked about it. Uh, you will need a tilt sensor, six LEDs, six 220 ohm resistors, and one 10 kilo ohm resistor. And of course, your Arduino Uno and breadboard. So I am going to move forward and we'll talk about those in just a little bit. Let me move to setting up the circuit. So obviously we can we can just look at the drawing on how to set it up. We always start by hooking up our positive and negative. In this case, the positive and negative, just like the other ones, is coming through them five volts and ground. So you go five volts to here, make it red because that keeping your colors or your uh, wires color coded makes sense. Helps you make sense when you come back to it. Uh, the red is always positive. Black is negative. So this entire all of these that are turning up green are all negative, and all of these are positive now. None of these are connected yet. All right, let's move forward. They want us to arrange the six LEDs. Uh, the easiest way to do that is just to see, okay, there's two in between each. We have six LEDs. I've got these, so I'm going to connect them. Now, if you're doing this in real life, like with an Arduino, uh, you need to look. These are directional. Uh, LEDs are directional, light emitting diodes. Diodes only let electricity go through in one direction. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. If you put yours backwards, if you put yours backwards, it is not going to work. And so when you're troubleshooting it later, if it's not lighting up, it's because your LED is backwards. There is a cathode and an anode. Now there's a shape on the inside of it. Uh, look up which side is which, okay? All right, now let's connect our resistors. Now they're all the same, right? They're all the same. The reason why I know that is they're all the same color. So we are going to grab the resistors and they are connected to ground, okay? And there's a resistor on every single one of them. Now, could you copy and paste these components? Probably, and it might be a little faster than what I'm doing. Uh, but I <laughs> didn't think about that before I did it. So those go to ground, and then we have it going 10. This one goes to 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, okay? And so let's make sure these are the correct resistance, though. So you'll see that all of them are 220 ohms. So we're going to click here. We are going to change this to ohms, and we're going to type 220. And you're going to do that for every single one of them. You'll see the colors change if you're doing this in real life with you know real components. You're going to want to make sure that the colors match. If you don't know what your resistor is, you can look up color charts for resistors online and you can just enter those colors and it will tell you. Uh, if you had one with a higher resistance, say you didn't have a 220, maybe you have a 250 or a 300, you could hook those up. It's just the LED might not be as bright. Um, but don't use one that's less, okay? If you use less, that's a bad decision. So then we'll see these are all connected just to the other side, going to 7654321. So we'll go there. They should all be red. And I do wish it would set, uh, you know, 
when I do a new one, it was always red, but I don't know how to set that as a default. I don't know if they offer that. If you work for Tinkercad, that would be cool if you would add that. Um, I feel like I'm a little off. Let me double check this. Okay, I'm not. So it just went down to two. I counted wrong. And there we go. So we've got everything. What's happening here? Ooh, let me change that to red. What's happening here is we have positive and negative. Nothing is connected to our positive row right now. So you actually don't need this right now. But I think we will for the tilt sensor. Then we have power that will come out these pins. But it would need to be programmed to come out those pins. Then the electricity would go through here. It would go into the anode, out the cathode. I hope that's correct. And then through the resistor. Now the resistor slows down the flow to make sure electricity doesn't flow, I guess, too fast through here so it doesn't burn out the component. Okay? All right. Moving on. Let's connect the tilt sensor. So a tilt sensor, let me pull it up. A tilt sensor is exactly what you think. It can sense tilting. All right. Now you'll notice uh, in real life, I, I don't know how many pins you will have on yours. This one has four pins. It says terminal one, three, four, two. So it goes one, two, three, four. A lot like my quadcopter when I'm setting that up. So make sure there are probably numbers on the bottom of it. If you're trying to match it, we're going to connect one and three together. Uh, I believe it's a little weird putting it here, but I believe we're just going to connect one and three together. So we're running power to the tilt sensor, right? And it doesn't have to go up that high. I'm just going to do it here, right? Because if we run it here, it, it still runs it there uh, and that'll be red. Now, remember your colors don't necessarily matter. Okay, then there is a resistor. So we want to grab another resistor. And if we look in the description, it, I believe it's the 10K ohm one. So here's our resistor. And that is going to ground it. Make sure it's not connected to positive. It is grounding it. And then it looks like we have a wire coming from 8. Let me double check that. 8 all the way up there. Great. So we've got 8 running to here. And so what it has is electricity running through the tilt sensor. If it gets tilted, it will change the amount of electricity running through here. And number eight will read it. Now, some of you might wonder, why would we connect to eight instead of our analog? And we've used analog almost the whole time. Analog is when we're looking for a range of values. So for instance, I, I guess it's funny because... We did use the buttons that don't necessarily give us a range, but sometimes they do. So the big thing is if we're using something that's just on or off, that's digital, okay? Then we want to use these digital pins and we'll create it as an input rather than an output. If it's going to give us a range like the light, uh, the photo resistor that we used in the light therming product, uh, project, then it's a range between 0 and 1,023 or 1,024 total values, then you want an analog. So since it's just on off, we're going to be using the digital pin. Could you program this to work with the analog? Yes, you could. Um, I, I think you just have to know a little bit more about, you probably have to turn the serial uh, port on and then read the values and try to figure it out. This is just a little bit easier this way. Okay. And then let's make sure we don't, we have the correct resistor. So that's the 10 K ohm. So we click on it. It's kill ohm already. Uh, make sure that your colors match. If you're doing this in, uh, you know, with a real Arduino, I don't want you to burn anything out. All right. We will move forward to the programming. So as always, I use create.arduino.cc. I go to examples, starter kit, digital hourglass. I took that. The reason why is I really like that it has the directions as well as the credits for who created it, right? People spent a lot of time creating this, and I think that they deserve their, you know, we should say, hey, thank you, Scott Fitzgerald. <laughs> We'll see if it's him again. I'm just going to paste it. I love that it has the directions. Shout out to Scott Fitzgerald again. Great job making this eight years ago. Still going strong. We will create an integer called switch pin. We're just saying switch pin is number eight. So anytime we write switch pin with a lowercase s, capital P, uh, in the code below, we're just saying number eight. 
we could actually just write eight instead of switch pin, but this makes us keep, uh, make sense of things, especially when we come back to our programming in the future. Then this says store the last time an LED was updated, unsigned log, previous time equals zero. So this is a, uh, a we're creating a variable called previous time equals zero. Unsigned log, we'll, we might get to that in a little bit. I'm going to need a little more clarification before I describe how that works for you. Then we're creating an integer switch state equals zero. We're just saying right now switch state is zero. We're saying this is zero, meaning no electricity going through it. Previous switch state right now we're saying zero. As Bob Beeman asked, uh, we could probably leave these off. We could erase that. We probably don't need a value, but uh, why not? Let's add a value. Then an integer, it would be zero or one. That would be the, the decision there. And I believe it's because they want this to start uh, thinking the switch is off, okay? And that it's continued to be off. And then LED, we're saying uh, LED is on number two, a variable to refer to the LEDs. That's interesting. So we're just saying LED is equal to two. So then there's an interval, it says, uh, 600,000 milliseconds equals 10 minutes. And this is the interval at which the, to light the next LED. So if you remember in the description, uh, every 10 minutes, it's going to light the next one. So this will start after 10 minutes or maybe or originally 10 minutes later, 10 minutes later, 10 minutes later. So that's an hour. You could add even more LEDs to light up for every, you know, six hours or whatever you want. Then void setup, this runs one time. It says set the LED pins as outputs. Now this is interesting. This is, this is uh, if you've learned programming, this is, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. So it's saying four, there's an integer that's equal to uh, integer X, it's equal to two. As long as X is less than eight, we are going to add to it. So what, is that correct? Yeah, okay. So what they're saying is, and this is instead of writing out a bunch of stuff. So notice that we start on digital pin two. So they're saying start on digital pin two, set it as an output. Now add one, that's what this means, add one. So now we're on three, add it as an output. Is it still less than eight? Awesome, add another one, four, output. Is it still less than eight? Add another one, five, make it an output. And it keeps going until it's, right, when it's at seven, it's less than eight. So it sets seven as an output, but then it adds one and it says, wait, eight is not less than eight and it stops running this, okay? So all it's doing is saying, let's set two through seven as outputs. You could write that just pin mode two output, pin mode three output, but this is, it's good to learn that because it definitely saves time if you're doing a lot of pins. All right set the tilt switch pin as input. So then they're saying switch pin, which we already said is number eight. We're gonna say that's an output. Like I said, we want electricity. I'm sorry, this is an input. We want electricity to come out here. I'm gonna change this to orange. We want electricity to come out of these, but we want electricity to come in from this one. So this is an in, these are out. And that's what those said. Then it runs this loop, okay? store the time since the Arduino started running in a variable. So it says the current time equal milliseconds. Compare the current time to the previous time. Okay, so if the current time minus the previous time is more than the interval, which we defined up here, then make previous time equal to the current time and turn the LED on. Okay, if the current time minus the previous time is more than the interval, it's not gonna do anything, okay? It's not gonna do anything. But every time that the current time minus the previous time is more than the interval, so you know, 60, 600,000 milliseconds or 10 minutes, it's going to turn on a new LED. And then it's going to add one number to the integer LED that we created here. Because right, so number two will light up, I'm referring to the numbers here, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Once seven is lit up, if LED equals seven, then the hour is up, right? It's done, it's done. 
Then it says, read the switch state. Switch state equals digital read switch pin. So it's going to read here, right? It's going to read here, and it's going to see, is this on or off? If the switch state, uh, I want to say is different from, I, I can't remember. <laughs> I should know this one, and <laughs> I apologize. Look, uh, here, we, I should really, I, I don't know why I'm blanking on that one. I think it's because I've been talking so much. So if we go in there and we look up, it's an inequality, so it's not equal to. There we go. Thank you. Okay. So if the switch state is not equal to the previous switch state, then for all those LEDs, turn them off. That's what low means. It does the same thing that it did up here, and it says make two low, three low, four low, five low, six low, seven low, eight. It won't do anything because it's it won't do anything because eight is not less than eight. And so low means off, high means on, low means off. Then reset the LED variable to the first one. So it resets it back to two, because remember it would have been equal to eight because it was adding one to every single one of these. And then reset the timer. Say previous time is equal now to the current time. All right, and then make the previous switch state equal to the switch state that way it knows did the switch state change because this tilt sensor might be on right we we tilt it it turns it on so it's going to reset everything but it's going to be stuck in the on position so how's it going to know that it changed well once it turns off by tilting it the other way then it'll know hey it switched the state and it'll run it all over again so this is a decently easy setup a little bit more complicated programming. Go back through my explanation if you need it. Um, I would really suggest walking through all these notes and really trying to internalize exactly how it works. Sometimes the mathematical thinking of, of programming requires a little bit longer than you know a, a 10 or 15 minute video. What I would really do is I would walk myself through this um, almost like it's a story. Like I am <laughs> within this thing and I am existing as, well, am I gonna flip that switch? Am I gonna turn that LED on? When do I stop it and all that stuff? Hopefully my explanation helped a little bit. I know up above, I, I might've been a little confusing, but I hope I redeemed myself. If I redeemed myself, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if not, don't give me a thumbs down, okay? Subscribe, like, uh, thank you so much. I, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this one I think was cool because it brought up so many details, especially with uh, these, you know, the X equals two, X less than eight and add one to X. I think these are really, really cool things. So have a great day, everybody.